Hi, my name is Raymond Fortuna, Global Product Manager for Matthews Marketing Systems, and I'm here to talk about high-speed primary coding. So what is primary coding? Primary coding is generally a series of alphanumeric characters or codes that is applied to the direct packaging that the product is in. Now that packaging can vary widely from paper to cardboard, plastics, glasses, and steel. But what is the purpose of this coding? Historically, it's been twofold. Track and trace, which gives the manufacturer the ability to determine the location of the production, the time in which it was produced. The second part would have been serialization, which is when you are applying a unique code to each product as it passes the print zone. So when we're talking about primary coding, what are the two most important factors? And generally, that's cost per mark and the speed at which the mark can be applied. So let's talk about the different technologies. I mentioned the CIJ or continuous inkjet. The CIJ has a medium capital cost that's somewhere between six and $13,000 just for the printer. The resolution is low at 64 DPI, but one of the big advantages of the CIJ is the ability to have a half inch throw distance, which means that the product can be up to a half inch away from the printhead, which makes this perfect for round or recessed surfaces and the product control is not as critical. Speed is message dependent, with one line codes being 1200 feet per minute, but adding a second line easily brings the speed down to about 200 feet per minute. Adding QR codes, 2D codes, barcodes only slow down this process more. The CIJ is not the most user-friendly product and often requires service. Service that must be done by highly trained personnel, generally from the factory. But if we were to look at the cost per mark, the factors that go into that cost per mark are inks, makeup solution, and maintenance. Generally, you're looking in the neighborhood of five cents per thousand marks. So the second technology I referenced was thermal inkjet, or TIGE. The TIGE has a low capital cost at about $1,000 to $2,000 per printer, and the resolution is superior with up to 1,200 DPI horizontally. The one drawback to TIGE is the 1 8 inch throw distance, which means round objects, recessed objects, it's a challenge to be able to print on them, and product control is critical. Now, what's unique to TIGE over CIJ is that the speed of the printing is not dependent on the message, only on the horizontal resolution. So that means TIGE can print small text up to large graphics at exactly the same speed. With the 300 DPI horizontal resolution, max speed being around 400 feet per minute, all the way down to 75 DPI, which is comparable to the CIJ, being about 1,600 feet per minute. Now, if these speeds aren't fast enough, you can also interlace cartridges. By interlacing, I mean that two cartridges are placed side by side and they work together to generate the full image. That doubles the speed. TIGE systems require little to no maintenance. The cartridge is the printhead. When the cartridge is expired, putting a new cartridge in is the equivalent of replacing your printhead. The cost per mark for thermal inkjet can be prohibitive, especially when using single-use cartridges. With the advent of robust bulk ink systems, though, the cost per mark can now be reduced to as low as three cents per thousand marks, as opposed to five cents per thousand marks with CIJ. The third technology that I mentioned were lasers. Lasers have a high capital cost, with CO2s being in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range and fiber lasers being upwards of $50,000. Lasers do not have consumables, but their sources do have a lifespan. CO2 tubes last roughly 30 to 40 hours an hour of continuous printing, and fiber printers last up to 100,000 hours of continuous printing. Now because the mark that's being applied is ablation, there is no real resolution to speak of, and the focal distance is in laser's favor with a four to six inch range. Just like CIJ, message speed is dependent on what is being printed, with a typical two-line lot code taking about 33 milliseconds per code. Barcodes and 2D codes slow down things considerably with up to approximately 10 seconds per code. Now lasers are not universal, they must be matched to the substrate, so that means packagers with multiple different substrates, multiple different products, may not be able to find a single laser to handle all of their needs. Now lasers do require very little maintenance, but they also require specific protective equipment to protect against emitted radiation. 
thermal inkjet can play a larger role in primary coating, particularly due to its ability to print codes, 2D codes, at high speeds. Robust bulk systems and rumors of long throw cartridges now start to overcome some of the largest obstacles for thermal inkjet and primary coating, and that is cost per mark and the ability to throw ink longer distances. Here at Matthews, we took a completely unique approach to the bulk system for thermal inkjet. We call it the ABIS, or Active Bulk Ink System. The key is in the A, active. This system uses computer processors, sensors, and accelerometers to ensure accurate performance. The system itself is consisted of two main pieces. The main unit, which is a series of valves, all mounted to the processor, that is constantly delivering the ink to the cartridges. The cartridge sensor module is an individual unit that is always monitoring the cartridge conditions. One sensor module required per cartridge. Now, atmospheric changes can affect the internal makeup of the cartridge. And for competitors' units, they have a set and forget mentality. Once you set up the uh, equipment, there is no way to monitor or make small adjustments. Here we're using a series of sensors and processors to ensure that as environmental conditions change, our delivery of the ink changes to meet it. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on high-speed primary marking and coding.